I've got a little bit of a treat for you this morning. We're now at Psalm 50. Well done for sticking this far. And instead of just one leader or two leaders bringing Psalm 50 to you, I've got a whole collection. Hi guys, well done for reaching Psalm 50. I'm Elliot. I'm Dominic. Hey guys, hope you're doing okay. If you don't know me, I'm Ben. So we've seen that it's split up into a few different parts. So we're just going to briefly talk about um, those little sections. You want to do the first one? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the psalm kicks off um, with the first section where it talks about God who's going to, he's amassing everybody from earth, um, you know, everyone from the east to the west. Um, and he's going to get everyone together to hear his declaration. Um, and then it goes on to just say a couple things about how great and wonderful God is um, and his amazing power. He's the giver of life. He controls even the rising of the sun. I mean, how can we not trust the person that is in charge of so much? Verse 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Now this this uh, verse really strikes me. Zion in the Old Testament, it refers to that place where God lives. The place where God will finally dwell with his people. In all his glory, in all his perfection, absolutely dazzling, awe-inspiring and unimaginable radiance that burns with the, the power of a billion suns. He describes as many, many things in this passage such as the mighty one, the God of justice, the most high. This God is all powerful. Now, for me, especially with a lot of worry and I'm sure a lot of you at the moment, knowing that we trust in this mighty God, the God of justice, God of righteousness, that we can put all our anxieties on him. And as it says in Romans 8.31, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this passage, that if God is for us, who can possibly stand against us? Not the coronavirus, not friends who maybe give us a hard time or college or work or anything like that. It, we can trust in this God who um, gives us life in the fullest and we can depend on him in all circumstances. But that is what he is and that's what his dwelling place will be forever. And that's where we're heading, if we know him, to the place where we will gaze upon his beauty as he shines forth forever. And after a million years of living there and having our minds blown by how beautiful and dazzling he is, there'll still be more to drink in every day. Cool. Um, and in the next section, which is verses 7 to 15, um, the Lord is talking about uh, what worship he finds acceptable. Now he's talking about um, various sacrifices and offerings. So they're offering sacrifices to God, but they don't truly believe in what they're doing. They don't trust or honour and they're not really truly thankful to God. People who on the outside say they believe, but in reality, they're just going through the motions. And the people are going through the motions. That might look different for us than it did to the Israelites um, two, three thousand years ago. But we can still go through the motions as well, can't we? We can still go to church, do the right things, say we believe in Jesus, uh, pretend to pray in a Bible study, turn up. We can still um, be nice to each other. We can still go through the motions, but without doing it um, for the glory of Jesus. On the outside, professing to be Christians, but actually not living Christian lives day to day. So the challenge for me, for instance, is when I'm in work, which is where I'm off very shortly, can my colleagues and my patients see a difference? Maybe it's that I don't join in the word board gossip or maybe um, not complain. Um, and, you know, that's hard. It's hard because we want to fit in. Um, at the moment, I'm not in my real place of work because I've been redeployed and I want I don't know the co my colleagues. I want to fit in. So the temptation is there to just behave how they behave to fit in. You can really feel the power and the sovereignty and the majesty of God here. As he says, verse 10 onwards. Every animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills, every bird in the mountains and the insects in the field are mine. If I were hungry, would I not tell you the world is mine and all that is in it? Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Well, he actually basically says that he doesn't need them because the Lord doesn't go hungry at all. In verse 13, there's that um, rhetorical question, do I eat the flesh of bulls and drink the blood of goats? Obviously not. Remember, 
God doesn't need us to sacrifice to him. He's not like he's not like he's really, really hungry and he just needs us to burn a bull or whatever. That's not what it's about at all. Um, but then 14 and 15 talk about actually why we still do them um, and it's to honour him. It's about showing how seriously um, sin affects us and how sorry, how repentant we are when we go against God's ways. Now, we don't need to do that. We don't need to burn those sacrifices or offer that stuff. Because we know Jesus was the great sacrifice for us. In verse 15, we can call on the Lord in the day of the trouble. He has delivered us through the blood of Jesus. And so we should not go through the motions, but we should honour him. Verse 15. The third section, uh, which is 16 to 21, then continues on to uh, it, God's then accusing the people of not sticking to the, the second half of the Ten Commandments. So it includes things like not not stealing, not committing adultery, not lying, not coveting, um, and it, it goes on um, like to to say, oh look, this is the type of people that you are, um, and he's condemning them for their actions. In verse twenty one, it says that God has kept silent, and He has, and this isn't because He's condoning our sinning. He's not. It's because in His great mercy, He wants to give us as much time as possible. Um, to repent and come to him and know and rely and truly be thankful for him. And, you know, this isn't going to last forever. That's very clear. One day, his judgment and deserved punishment will happen. And we and I need to be right and ready for this moment. Very good. And the last section sort of ends with a, um, a word of threatening in verse 22. It says, um, I'll tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you. But then it offers a direction of grace in verse 23. Um, to the blameless, I will show my salvation. So that's sort of a little conclusion for the whole psalm. It's a, it's an joyous passage and it has given me lots of hope, especially in this time of uh, lockdown, uh, a lot of uncertainty and a lot of worry for a lot. I think this psalm is awesome because it talks about how powerful and great and mighty our God is. And the God who created the heavens and the earth wants to know us and he wants to know us intimately and he cares for us. I just think that's great. It's just showing how all powerful God is in all circumstances, uh, in all worries, in all anxieties. We can rest in God. Deep, deep, deep. <laughs> I've got a barcode on my face. <laughs> I have to like lean over here. Otherwise I'm like, ah! keep going. I'll be praying for you guys. Cheers.